It's good to see y'all. Y'all so beautiful. Tell you never get beautiful. Y'all are beautiful. We give honor to my apostle. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Everybody in the congregation, I love you. I love you. I got nothing but love for you. Let me uh, let me read the scripture. They put me in Luke 22, verses 43. Is it all right if I back up just a little bit? Go to 37 for me. Go to 37. Say amen when you get there. Hey, y'all are famous. <laughs> for I say to you that this which is written must still be accomplished in me. Somebody say purpose. And he who was numbered with the transgressors for the thing concerning me have an end. Somebody say live. live. Drop on down to 42. And it says, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours. Mm. Somebody say, nevertheless. <laughs> then the scripture there that was given, then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. Praise God. Somebody say, team. Team. Uh, let's go to the glory. Dear Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity. I thank you for being an awesome God that you are. Dear Lord, you are mighty and well in what you do. Dear Lord, allow this tongue to express exactly what you want to say today, Lord. That the ears may hear what you needed to hear and not what I wanted to hear. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father. Amen. Amen. Family, it was a bit, it's been a while. It was a, it was a, I was young, very young, probably 19 years old. And he, my, not that age, but, <laughs> but my mother, she's, uh, the guy was so she's gone and passed away. But she, I was going downstairs and my dad was paying the bills. He paid him once a month. And uh, he'd go downstairs and he'd be down there in the dining room paying his bills. My mom would go in there every now and then and she would rub his shoulders and rub his head to encourage him. So I ran on down there and I said, uh, my mom looked at me and I looked at her. And she said, she, looked, she said, honey, we got some handsome boys. I said, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I looked around, I said, my brother's ain't here. I got two older brothers, one of them back there. Thank you for checking me out. I said, man, this got to be just me. She talking about right now, so I'm feeling this. And then she got that real serious face on her look. Verily, verily, I say to you, that look when you know that when you're reading the word, she said, son, you got something special inside of you. And I said, okay. She said, but it's going to take you to figure it out. It's going to take you to go to God to figure it out. Give me a big feel mine. I said, yes, yeah, so I stand there for me, please. This is my uh, my mirror prompt. Just stand there. That's my mirror prompt. Hang on to it. So I said, okay, I'm a young thunder cat and I'm gone. I'm, I'm going outside to play. She gave my word. She put the seat in. I ran out. Years come. I meet Pastor. The good Lord gives me the mission of one blood. I go up past the office, we're in there, we're communicating, we're talking about it. Pastor's reading over the proposal, and she's looking at it, she said, she's shaking her head, and she says, son, there was a word she said that I missed when the first time she said it. She said, with this call, there's gonna come a great deal of pain, suffering, and a lot of love. Wow. She said, but if it's of God, wow. it'll work for you. I said, 10 for gotcha. So I'm going. <laughs> so, listen, the way I think, my mindset, I said, okay, one blood is a movement of unity. It's designed to bring people back to understand we all are God's children, one human race. So I speak against racism. I'm going against the grind of the whole world. I'm going to put a weight that I cannot contain on my shoulders. I'm about to put something on me that my wife, my sons, my daughters can be affected by. And I'm gone. I'm speaking in places. I'm going to different churches, different pastors trying to steal my mission. They even put a, uh, I have one of them to go up and put a sign and say, we're going to call this service One Blood. I'm going to be one of the speakers. He's going to be the keynote. Don't you know I made a phone call right then? And I said, brother, do I need to come see you? He said, no, sir. I said, good deal. Thank you. <laughs> Moved on. Moved on. So I'm flying, I'm going through life, I'm pushing one blood. We're having Thanksgiving dinners. The first year we fed uh, four people that was, it was glorified to God. 
I said, thank you, Lord, we're moving, we're moving. We're having prayer conferences here. A.O. coming up, we're singing, we're having a good time. Things are going great for one blood. Then boom, I get hit in the head. And that humility is kicked in. I'm starting to lose my purpose. Wow. I'm starting to lose my life. Mm. The living part. I'm getting ready to exist and not live. I get hit in the head. And I mean by this is my financial situation got hit so hard. I find out my house is in foreclosure. I called the lady called me. She says, Mr. Foreman? I said, yes. She said, you're only one month off of being in foreclosure. I said, ma'am, is that senior on the hand? She said, yes. I said, well, my social security number is such, 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 such. She said, that matches. I said, ma'am, you sure you're talking about me? She said, yes. And I'm sorry. I said, well, let me call you back tomorrow. Let me, let me figure this out. Here I am thinking, I said, Lord, I pay my tithes. They come out of my check. I give my offering. I give my time. I do my due diligence. I'm grinding right now, Lord. What in the world? How can my house that I just paid God just bought? I put my family in. Y'all, I got a big family that resides in that home. And I'm about to lose it. My mind is like, what in the world? So I keep going. We go through another Thanksgiving. We end up feeding 150 people. I'm like, man, I'm working right now. And then boom, I take a rib shot. My marriage took a downward pour to a debt that I couldn't understand. Now, I've been married 15, 16 by this time. And I understood we go through problems. We, we worked it out always. But this particular time, I couldn't. Couldn't get it, couldn't grasp it. This point in time, I came into existence. No more living. None of that was involved at that point in time. My purpose was gone. I couldn't think. So I picked up my familiar, my bottle. And not just brandy. I used to love brandy. That was my dark, you know, my, you call it the pretty, call it brown. That was one of my favorite liquors. I picked that up. This is almost in 18 now. And I'm confused, frustrated. My wife and I, I get to the point where we have lawyers. The divorce papers are written up. We talk about real shock. And I'm sitting here thinking, man, I'm going against the very thing on this earth that fights against everybody. I've been there for my wife more than I could think. How can this happen to me? And I'm coaching, I'm pushing these kids, I'm motivating them. We're winning games. And the same people I'm winning games with their parents are talking about, man, my name is getting ripped in the streets and I don't even run the streets. Wow. Wow. And my name was getting ripped, torn back and forth, and I'm saying, trying to let me find the source. Because if I can find the source, I'm gonna light him on fire. That's the wrong thinking. Yes, sir. That's it. I was in a messed up state of mind. I couldn't think straight. Well, I lost my vision, my purpose. I was starting to exist. Now I'm on my way to total rejection. Right when Christ went down, for the nevertheless moment. He was going in a total rejection. I get to that point with me and my wife. That's going on. I'm still moving, still moving. And then boom, I get hit lower than I could ever be hit. I lost the relationship with my sons. That's the blow that knocked me down. I've taken a lot of hits, but that one, that broke me to my mirror. But you gotta understand what the mirror is. Look what he's holding. You gotta understand where your mirror is because that's where he broke me down to. I'm at his feet now. I'm at his feet now. And I'm like, man, this is too hard, God. Now you got me. So I said, okay, if you want to play hard, play it by yourself, God. I give it up, I told Pastor. I called my brother first, Steve. And I told him, I said, man. He was like, yo, I ain't never heard the man that's 
strong as an ox. You speak like you're speaking right now. And he said, this is what I'm going to do for you, though. He said, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for all y'all and keep it moving. And call my old man. Same thing. He said, son, I've never heard this before. I've never seen us, and then I have I. But you're my source. You're the one I come to when I need that grind. I need to get my mojo back. He said, son, I don't. He said, I can't even see him lie to you. I can't. I ain't got nothing for you on this one. I said, all right. That's two down. I called Pastor. We converse back and forth. Pastor is not letting up. She's always encouraging. 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 But you got to remember, I lost my purpose. I started existing. I'm on my way to total rejection. So my spiritual ears are closed. I can't hear her. Even though I'm standing right in front of her. We're going back and forth. And I'm standing right there in front of her. We even prayed together. And I'm still catching all the hell that was coming my way. Finally, my resting spot. I always remember what my mom had told me. So about mid-18, the first before that, I told God, I said, I'm not, I'm not doing it in a while. I give up. I was going to give up one blood. I was going to let it all go my wife, my kids. I couldn't do it anymore. My heart was literally ripped in half. I couldn't maintain it. Too many people talking about me, and I couldn't figure out why. I couldn't find the source. I'm glad God never let me find it. I was going to tell him what Fred would have done to me. But this time. I met my nevertheless moment. When they get me down, right at his feet, praise God. When he's got me here, yes. I'm having a dream. The first time that I've ever dreamed of my mother in almost 30 years. She comes, she's in a dream, I'm in my truck. I'm riding, I see her, I said, hey, hey, that's my mom. I said, hey, mom, how you doing? Get in the truck, let's ride. She said, hey, son, come on. Got in the truck, we're riding. I said, mom, how you doing? I ain't seen you. I don't know where, but I ain't, you know, I ain't seen you. She said, I'm doing great, son. I'm in there. Oh, my God. I said, hey, amen. She said, son, how you doing? She said, I see all them beautiful children you got. You're married. You're doing, you got your mission, your, 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 your uh, call. Remember that word? I said, yeah, I'm going, I'm going. And I said, I'm trying. And she said, son, how are you really doing? As I'm holding on to the answer, and getting ready to answer him. I get woke up by my little one, little Rosalind. She wakes me up, she says, Daddy, we have a cook some eggs. <laughs> Girl, I'm trying to get this drunk with my mama right now. <laughs> she said, Baby, she said, Daddy, we get, come on, we gotta go cook some eggs. We get up, we go cook the eggs, we we're getting ready, and she, as she's standing on her little stool, she says, Daddy, you don't have to go anywhere. You can stay with us. In me. I used to cook eggs, omelets for my mom. And I cooked an abundance of them before she passed. And my baby girl says, you can always stay with us. I love my family, my family loves you. You can stay with us. I've had my nevertheless moment right there. Yeah. I said, okay, God, I gotta give up the alcohol, I gotta give up the cigarettes. Got to get up to foolishness. Everything I've done in 2018, I went to pastor in 2019. I said, Pastor, before I serve under you, I got to clear my name just with you. That means I don't care about what everybody else is thinking anymore. Because now God has done took free. He left free down here. Now he's bringing up deacon free. You got to understand this thing right here now. You got to understand this thing right here now. And I told her, I said, Pastor, it's my turn. I'm done. It's over. Yeah. She said, praise God. Praise God. She was excited more than I was. And I said, that's it. I said, Pastor, I'm done. I'm, I'm cool. I'm ready to do whatever God is willing for me to do. I had to have my nevertheless moment. Let me get my family here real quick. Hold on. Come on, let's go. Please. <laughs> I had to have my nevertheless moment. When Christ went down, he said, if it not my will, but yours. When me and Pastor talk, 
And I told her everything that I've done. I said, can they stop? Y'all line up right here for me, please. It's not Stay with it. Come on, man. And when he, when he, when he came, when he, when he came up from prayer, the angel, God sent the angel down. Jesus never called his angels. They could have, but his father, his father, sent a team down to restore. The very thing I thought was destroying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I had to line back up with my mirror.